Good morning, friends. I greet you all in the matchless name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. At the very outset, I would like to thank the Lord God Almighty for giving us one more day to meditate upon His scriptures. I hope and pray that you are all safe and secure. And today, as we do our devotion from the scripture, I want you to turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Let me read it out for you. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables, and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they were thrown because they had no root. Other seed fell among thrones which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on a good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, some multiplying thirty, some sixty, and some hundred times. Verse 9, Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. This is the word of the Lord God Almighty. In times like this, where there is fear, there is panic, there is doubt in our lives, we Christians left with only one weapon, that is the word of the Lord God Almighty, which is sharper than the two edges of sword. Mark chapter 4 verses 9, 1 to 9, Jesus you know, explains a great story, a parable by which he explains the imminent of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. And whenever he wants to explain or convey the message of the kingdom, we would always use the parable. Parable simply means earthly stories with the heavenly meanings. Look at the signs and the calamities that are taking place in our lives. Look at the virus, look at the earthquake, look at the plague, look at the locust, look at the things that are happening which are unpredictable and these are the signs of the last days. Here, Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 9, here Jesus explains about three things. Number one, hearing the word and receiving the word and applying it in our lives. Here Jesus explains about a farmer who shows the seeds. And Jesus explains about four different grounds. One being the hard ground where the seeds fell but could not grow crops, could not grow cranes because they could not understand the word, they could not grasp the word. Secondly, we see a stony ground where seeds fell, but it did not root you know, much deeper. It was shallow. So when things you know, went wrong, they were scorched, they were plucked out, they were destroyed. We see a third ground where it's a thorny, thorny place where the seeds you know, you know, fell, the plants are growing, but due to thrones, you know, it was chalk and it was destroyed. And the fourth ground we see, it's a good ground, where the, the believer received the word and yielded much fruits, 34, 64, and 104. So when we compare this parable to the world, we understand there are four categories of people. One who do not understand the word, one who receives the word very happily but gives up as, as the days go by. And there is third category of people who receive the word very gladly but when persecution, when worldly pressure comes, they give up. And fourthly, we see believers who are committed no matter what happens, they, they stick on and they grow 30-fold, 60-fold and 100-fold. So today, my dear friends, keeping this parable in our minds, let us ask our question. Let us ask a question to ourselves. How is our heart? How is our belief system? Are we yielding or are we fruitless? Are barren people, people like without you know, hope? 
In what category of soil do we fit in? What type of heart do we carry? How do we perceive the word and apply to them in our lives? Because Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 it says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 19, As water reflects a face, so a man's heart reflects a man. You know, when we understand the definition of the heart, that organ that distinguishes the living from the dead, if it simply means that, you know, the heart is the only pumping organ, you know, which, which, which describes that person is alive. The moment the heart stops, the person, you know, stop, you know, leaving. So the heart becomes a central part of a man. So today, my dear friends, I want to ask you a one very important question. Where is your heart today? Is it rooted in the scripture or is it somewhere else? How is your heart? Is it healthy or is it weak in times like this? Because we human many a times think with mind, not with heart. That is why we have a distinction between the heart and mind. Heart connects and mind disconnects. Heart believes in bridges, whereas mind raises walls. Heart constructs and mind destructs. So these conclusions are in most of the cases. So that is why listening and walking heart will give you more peace, more happiness. Because the heart is more related to virtues and mind to vices and senses. So today, my dear friends, where is your heart? How is your heart? If you want to be happy, then listen to the word that is rooted. Listen to your heart that is rooted in the scriptures. So today, my dear friends, this parable is very apt in midst of this situation, in midst of this condition, in midst of these circumstances where the, where the farmer, where the Jesus Christ emphasizes how is our heart. Today, it all depends on our heart, whether to live happy life, whether to live a courageous life, whether to live a life of assurance, whether to live a life which is acceptable in the sight of the Lord God Almighty. So today, my dear friends, let us ask this one very important question. Where is our heart today? How is our heart today? Is it rooted in the scriptures? If not, we are not going to be yielded. We are not going to bear much fruits and we will be the seeds, you know, like the seeds that were fell in a hard ground, stony ground and a stony ground and then and and, and the seeds will not produce much crops. So today, let us submit our hearts to the Lord God Almighty and obey the word and receive the word and bear much fruits. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Indeed, my dear friends, when we submit ourselves as a living sacrifice, our hearts, our mind, our thoughts, our plans, our fear, our anxieties, it is the Lord who guards ourselves. It is the Lord who guards our heart and gives us the peace and happiness. May the good Lord bless you all to have the courageous heart to face any challenges that arises in our life, in our day-to-day -day life. May the good Lord bless you all. Let's shall we look unto the Lord in prayer. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the wonderful words of life that has come this morning. Father, as we begin this day, Father, we simply submit ourselves, our heart, our mind, our soul, and our thoughts into your mighty hand. Father, strengthen us from within so that we will have that strong heart, that healthy heart, that matured heart of Father God, where we will receive your word and face this world, O Lord, and overcome this world and be victorious in this world. Father, help us to bear much fruits, O Lord, 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, so that the Lord will continue to become the channel of blessings to many. Father, in the midst of all this chaos, Father, O Lord, lead us and guide us Never leave us like orphans, but always guard ourselves, guard our hearts, guard our mind, O oh Father God, so that we will never fall, we will never turn to the left, never turn to the right, but always rooted in your scriptures, and the Lord achieve greater heights, achieve greater miles in our life, O oh Father God. Once again, submitting the word and the prayer into your mighty hand, and the day into your mighty hand, we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. 